konuşulan, Türkiye yurtluk etmiş olan yerleri kıyamete kadar Türk'ün hükmü altında bırak. Yüce Allah Türk'ü korusun.
Mirfate Zakir, Origin of Turks and Tatars, Part 1, Origin of Turks. Second chapter, Detection Methods for the Ethnic Roots of the Turks, Primary Sources and Historical Works. In researching the problems of an origin of ethnos as special value had the discovery of their most ancient ethnical roots. But at present no methodic is developed neither in the historical linguistics nor in the historical anthropology for this purpose. This chapter will try to show at least one some ways of the detection of the ethnical roots of the Turks. First of all, there is a problem of finding and assessing the primary sources. Every ethnos during its rise and development leaves a trace. Somewhere in somehow remain things made by it are kept are passed from one generation to another the methods of producing material goods, opinions which find expression in folklore and the burials are left remains of the members of the ethnos are found burial traditions and at last remains its greatest invention a language these traces of the tribes are objective primary sources for study of their history in the pre-literature period. These sources are not to be studied by the historical and ethnical linguistics, archaeology, ethnology, mythology, historical folklorists, historical osteology, craniology, and anthropology as a whole on the background of zoopalaeontology, paleogology, and paleogeography. After mention of writing people who learn this greatest achievement of humanity started recording diverse information about themselves, their people, their neighbors in writing. Eventually came a custom of writing chronicles where information about major events happening with them or their neighbors. About the ancient history of Turek, some of the above records can be taken from Chinese, Indian, Greek, Assyrian, Jewish, Roman, Byzantine, Armenian, Arabian, Persian, Turk, and Russian written sources. But the study should be taken with a caveat that they cannot be completely and unconditionally objective for the records are written as a rule from a subjective point of view of the chronographer. This especially relates to the evidence about neighbors, but despite that the ancient written sources are historical sources alongside what the linguistical, archaeological, ethnological, anthropological, zoological, geological and geographical sources. In the ethnogenesis there are also termed primary sources. In study of the ancient history of any people in detecting its ethnic roots, in addition to the above sources, a big value also have historical works, which cannot be classed as primary sources. The first historical works about the history of their and not only their peoples were created by the historians who found and studied the primary sources. It's known that a historian as much as he tried to create an objective picture of the history brings on the foreground the most full reconstruction of the history of first is people and the history of other people's source as a rule as a general background for a better display of his own history. Therefore, in the initially examined historical works which based on the analysis of primary sources, a display of, uh, of um, subjectivity should not be surprising to anybody. Many historical studies are written based on the study of not only the primary sources of the historical sources but also based on the study of the historical works. In these studies, not only the discoveries but also the mistakes of the predecessors are frequently repeated. As a result of repeating the mistakes of the predecessors and the traditional histori historiography began to be taken as axioms and very propagated in the subsequent works such mentioned the above Grant Louis generalizations as doctrines of the great movement of peoples that at that movement was begun by the Huns that before the great movement of peoples in the Eastern Europe were now tourists that Turks were nomads only, that Turks were Mongolians only, that nomadic Turks taught the Turkic language to non-Mongolians and then disappeared from the face of the earth, etc. Every scientist engaged in the history of Turks, like in other peoples, should analyze by all means, alongside with the study of the primary sources, the conclusions uh, given in the historical works. For in first, the primary sources from the point of the reflection of an episode of the Turkic history until now are studied totally insufficient. Secondly, many ancient Turkic ethnonyms found in the primary sources are classed by the modern historians of other ethnoses, and the contents of the primary sources are not always adequately commented on, and thirdly, not always is accounted for the 
ideas of particular messages in the written primary sources. In other words, the basic sources of study of the ethnic roots of Turks are the primary sources, and the historical works play a supporting role. Therefore, the attitude to them should always be careful. Archaeological discoveries also are reliable sources of the ethnogenesis, but without linguistical confirmation, they cannot disclose the ethnic composition of the population of that period. First, the age of an archaeological material determined them from, from other sources. For example, linguistic is determined as ethnic affiliation, and at last, the archaeological culture is attributed to a certain ethnos. A very important requirement is the objectivity of the linguistical research. For example, the Finding the ethnic affiliation of the 8th, 3rd century BC, a Nanian archaeological culture of the Ural Ital region, archaeologists trust conclusions of the Indo-Iranian and Finno-Igrian researchers that at that at that time they lived ostensibly Iranian lingual as Kaithans and in the forested zone lived Finno-Igrians. Coming from that, this archaeological culture is attributed to Finno Greens on the Halik of 1989, and the archaeological materials of the steppe zone are, are attributed to Indo Iranians. As the Turkic linguists were engaged in the ethnogenetical problems earlier, they would have proved years ago, based on the linguistical data, the Turkic speaking of the most of the Kutians and the Turkic layer could have been determined in the Ananian archaeological materials. Coming from the traditional tenets of the historical science that the first Turks came to the Ural Ital region ostensibly only in the 7th century AD, the Pinobori archaeological culture of Kama belonging to 2nd century BC, 3rd century AD, is also attributed to, uh, only to Finnogreans. It's quite surprising that to the so-called mech of archaeological culture, agricultural culture, of the fourth 8th century city in the Middle Ital region is not attributed to the local Turks because of the dogma that Turks there are considered to be nomadic cattlemen. This culture till present uh, awaits its ethnic owner is such an uncertainty exists is also for ethnic affiliation of some other archaeological cultures. Finally, this problem can be so solved only with a consideration of the Turkic linguistical sources. Ethnological, ethnographical sources closely connected to the archaeological, mythological, linguistical, craniological data are also used to detect the ethnic breeds of the peoples. But unfortunately, in Turkic ethnogenetical research, the ethnological sources are also uh, are used altogether insufficiently or are not considered at all because in many cases they contradict the conclusions of the traditional historical science. For example, the ethnological research of the Skycians proved their kinship uh, with Turks, and therefore the scientists who believe in uh, Skycians as Iranian lingual generally forget about the existence of the ethnological sources. Ethnological materials should be mentioned for the Turkological ethnogenetical research for they started to be used only recently. An example of the use of mythological sources in ethnogenetical research is the work of uh, Chagdurov. In a comparative study of the Mongolian, Iranian, Indian, Tibetan, and Turkic mythologists and folklore, he proved that these peoples have an ancient culture and are not young immature peoples. Chagdurov, 1980. In Turkey, Fikre Turkmen from the study of Turkic myth and legends proved of presence of high ancient culture of the Turks, Turkmen, 1996, 7th, 8th. Zeopalontology, paleoclimatology, and paleogeography, paleogeology, and evidence of other related disciplines should be used by scientists studying the ancient ethnic roots. For example, the presence of Turkic words in the language of some Arabian Indians initially was considered accidental. But the result of careful and diverse study lead scientists to a conclusion that the American Indians are immigrants from the eastern Siberia. How did they cross to the American continent? Scientists just turned for the answer to the evidence of the paleogeology where it was clearly shown that in, um, in antiquity the Bering Passage did not exist. It should be remembered that ethnogenetical sources should be studied with the use of materials not of some one people but of several peoples. As a result of comparison the outcomes of such studies, it's possible to determine the attribution of the materials of a certain ethnos.
the role of ethnonyms in the detection of the ethnic roots. Ethnonymy, alongside with、um, anthroponymy and toponymy, is a very important part of the linguistical sources. It gives the most reliable material for the definition of the ethnic composition for the Stadic tribes and their territories. Meanwhile, Turkology does not have enough works on ethnonymy. So far, we can list only the works of Dawlin Aitmurad of Turkic ethnonyms, Nikos 1986, and the Zakiyev Turkic Tatar ethnogenesy, ethnogenesis of a Turkic Tatars 1998, a chapter about the Turkic ethnonymy on page 213, 321. Some questions of the Turkic ethnonymy are mentioned also in the books of Nikonov ethnonymy 1917. In pop of names of the peoples of the USSR in 1973, ethnonymies appear still in the tribe society. Each clan can add an a had a name taken by it or given by the neighbors. Hence, from the very beginning of the ethnonym is in, in its origin could be either a self name and internal ethnonym, which in common linguistics is called by the term endo ethnonym and done inside as a foreign name, and in external ethnonym exo ethnonym, which is called by the international term. Ecto ethnonym, ectos outside of outside. Initial and or exo ethnonymy preserved very poorly. For example, experts suggest that the German and ethnonym Deutsch historically ascends to ancient Germanic te Teutis,、uh, with the meaning of our people. The most ancient、uh, Turkic ethnonym men means the ethnonym Tatar. On the contrary, means foreign people. The very Tatar historically ascends to a very combination of our people. Later, it was used for men and soldiers. Compare Korean to Lavek men and Tat, which can change from the root Yat, a line, a pronoun, historical rotation, YDT. Turks also had the ethnonym Kishi in Chinese rendition Kushi, which ascends to the word Kishi or Kishi, man and the lion. That the German ethnonym Deutsch, the Turkic ethnonym men from the very beginning could be and ethnonyms and the ethnonyms. Kishi, Kishi, and Tatar are foreign names which gradually change to the category of endosnonyms. As tribes develop, they are united in tribal unions and then are created ancient state and form ancient nations as a result of which are created secondary endosnonyms from the primary endosnonyms. For example, from the initial Turkic endosnonyms are Men, Sun, Shan, Sak. By defining them by the word Ku, white light appears secondary endosnonyms Kuar, Kavar, Kuman, Kushan, Kusan, Kus. Sakuchak, Ufchak. It was a mixing of different tribes where it created new ethnonyms out of the combination of two primary ethnonyms. For example, the ethnonym Az,、uh, defining the ethnonym Sun or Sun,、uh, forming the composite ethnonym Asun, Usun, Usun. Naturally, the tribes carrying the primary ethnonyms are considered more ancient than the tribes carrying secondary ethnonyms. So, Suns, Suns, Huns. Were more ancient tribes than Usuns for the last period, only as a result of mixture of Suns and Asses. The ethnonyms, like nouns, are partial and general, proper and nominal. Each ethnos has its own ethnonym. But during integration of ethnic communities, alongside with the own ethnonyms, also appear common nominal ethnonyms, naming simultaneously of a group of ethnoses. These are usually the ethnonyms of those ethnoses who manage to subordinate other ethnoses. For example, the ethnonym Ethnonym Turk becomes a common ethnonym after the Turks properly subordinated other ethnoses. The subordinated ethnoses keeping their own proper ethnonyms accepted as a common ethnonym, the very Turk. The common ethnonym also appears by the external attributes of the ethnoses. So, in contrast to the southern Turk, here representatives of the Turkic ethnoses, the numerous northern Sakas, otherwise called Mans, received a common ethnonym Kusak. Kupsak, Kupchak, White Sakari, Sen Kumen, Kuman, White Mans. Researching the entire roots, differentiating the,、uh, between the proper and common ethnonyms of the ethnoses is very important. For very frequently, the same ethnos in the historical sources is called at times by, by a proper and at times by a common ethnonym. For example, in the Volga region. Uh, we should try in vain to distinguish where are the Bulgars and where are the Kupchaks, because in actuality, all northern light Turks were called Kupchaks, not only the Bul Bulgars.
In the Middle Volga region in northern Caucasus, the Bulgars could be called by both Bulgars and Kupchaks. The consolidation of the Bulgarian state in the 9th century resulted in its all Turkic and non turkic tribes keeping their own ethnonyms adopt the common ethnonym Bulgar. Apparently, Bulgars presented themselves to the Wethating Arabs with a former common ethnonym Kupchak and told them the meaning of its ethnonym as white cocks, hawks, or its simple line. Therefore, in the Arabian sources, Bulgars are called Kaliba, white like people. By the same time, the Arabs also knew the narrower ethnonym Bulgar. During antique time, the word Sak or Saka and the derivative words Sakadi, Sakali merged Saks. From that root served as common ethnonyms for the ancestors of the Turks. Then, in the pronunciation or pronunciation of the Greeks, it has changed as follows: Sakadi, Skudus, Skite. The incidental sound to age in Russian was pronounced as F and as to a proper appearance, the words is cough. The times of the first and second Turkic Haganets played its role. The ethnonym Turks spread as the most common ethnonym. As a result of the Chinggisid con conquest of the huge territories and formation of four Tatar empires, the ethnonym Tatar in the Western Europe uh, designed all Chinggisid subjects, Chinese, Koreans, Afghans, Turks, Arabs. The Russians, all their eastern neighbors, called Tatars. Thus, the ethnonym Tatar in Western Europe, also Tatar people from Hell in the 30s, 80s, accepted as the most common ethnonym not only for the Turks but also for non-Turks. However, in the beginning it was applied as an ethnonym, then it placed it also used as an internal ethnonym. For example, now the ethnonym Tatars use the ethnonyms. The synonymic roots post ethnonyms Akachir, Akachir, Agachir, Mishar, and also be your rich people, Belair, rich people. Study of the ethnic history requires sufficient data about the ethnonyms of the studied people.